Hello, I'm Lamar Townsend, and I'm a psychic, an energy channeler, a tarot reader, and an astrologer. I'm actually also available for personal reading, so if you'd like to get a reading from me, visit my website, lamartownsendtarot.com. The cards never lie, and I have predicted many things. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and visit the predictions uh, playlist to see all that I've predicted so far. And in this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive documentary into Tasha K. We're going to be looking at the very beginnings of Tasha K's career. We're going to be analyzing her progress over the years. And we're going to see how the social media monster and the price of fame have both played a part in the ultimate downfall of Tasha K. So, if you want to stick around for this type of tea, First of all, once again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Keep in contact with me on my other social media pages. You can follow me at Lamar Townsend Tarot on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and all other social media platforms if you would like. Please share this video with your friends and family. And with that being said, let's take a deep dive into Tasha K and the social media monster and the price of fame. This is a Tasha K documentary. Tasha K first appeared on YouTube somewhere around late 2015 and early 2016. This was around the time that she first started uploading content. Keep in mind that this was also around the time that YouTube started to become popular in terms of act an actual job and career that could be lucrative. There were many YouTubers, influencers, content creators, um, drama gurus, which we'll get into here in a second, that were making a lot of money um, by 2015 and 2016 by solely posting on YouTube and reaping the benefits of advertising that was once again sold on YouTube as well. This is a clip from Tasha's very first video that she posted on YouTube. I believe the topic was about Ray J and his wife at the time, Princess, who they may or may not still be together. But Tasha, at the very beginning of her YouTube career back in 2015, 2016, was slightly different from the Tasha that we see today. There are definitely certain traits that Tasha still has today that she held back then. And you can still see it in, you know, if you go back to her old videos. But there's also something that changed very starkly as the years went on about her. Now going back to her first videos at the beginning of her career, Tasha's channel and her videos at the beginning felt intimate as it was just her and the camera. No fanfare, no backdrop, no aesthetic, no team. And this is the case with many YouTubers. They start out small, and then over time, they gain a large following, and then they build on that following, and they literally build a business. But there's often one key element that causes businesses to crumble and tumble. Especially when it comes to online affairs and online matters because for some reason this can often lack when it comes to online affairs and online matters and that is the word called integrity which will also come up at the end of this documentary again the word integrity as defined by Google is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles moral uprightness so the lack of integrity as you can see a lack of being honest and a lack of having strong moral principles is an easy way for a business and a person to crumble because someone with a lack of integrity will do anything to win and unfortunately this is often seen on social media and in the entertainment business overall 
which is one of the prices of fame. By 2017, this is a picture of, uh, of Tasha Kane 2017 on her YouTube channel. By 2017, Tasha K was beginning to brand herself with a recognizable logo, as you can see the unwind with Tasha K in the right corner, in the shape of a glass of wine, and in the reflection of the glass, she's holding a wine, a glass actually, which is very clever, very creative. Um, she was also improving her background as well. We have a much nicer background here. And, oh, always with a glass of wine in hand. Now, don't get me wrong. I personally love to unwind with a glass of wine or two myself. But to make it a brand is and was risky especially at the expense of other celebrities. It just created a culture of messiness. Think of you and your friends, your guy friends, your girlfriends getting together and enjoying a beer, you know, some beers, a glass of wine or whatever it is you do. And most of the time when you're with your friends or people you trust, you talk crap. You kind of, you know, just shoot the crap with each other. But to do it on camera in front of thousands and millions of people, I'll say as a content creator myself, and someone who airs the line of drama as well, you know, um, being a drama, drama influencer or guru, it was pretty brave to surround her brand and encompass her brand and the consumption of wine. By 2018 and 2019, Tasha K had become basically a full-fledged online business and platform that became a commonplace for exclusive tea to drop and be spilled, such as the R. Kelly drama we see here. This is a clip from Tasha's uh, video she posted around this time frame where she's on the phone with R. Kelly's baby brother, Carrie Kelly. Now, Tasha K. around this time was starting to get known for having these types of exclusive interviews with celebrities, friends, or family members in an attempt to get information out of said celebrities, friends, or family members. So, based on the timeline of events here, we can see that it was around 2018, 2019, that we really got to see a lack of integrity when it came to Tasha K and her getting her stories, all right? There was also a lack of respecting these celebrities' boundaries. Twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen were very much transitional years for Tasha K. She was transitioning from being a celebrity drama YouTuber to almost being on the cusp of being somewhat of a D list, C list celebrity. But the social media monster and the price of fame reared their ugly heads. By 2020, Tasha, now well seasoned into her YouTube career, was changing up her platform and she started to bring various guests on her show who were not all necessarily celebrities as you can see here now in my opinion this direction was a smart business move for Tasha to move towards 
as around this time in 2020, Tasha's platform was now large enough to amass a following of people who would now watch almost anything she posted. Even if it didn't directly relate to celebrities or pop culture. Right? Unfortunately, the interesting thing is... Her numbers showed that people clearly cared more about celebrity gossip. So why not give the people what they want? If it brings you more views, more money, and more fame, then what's the harm? As we would later learn, the harm ended up once again being at the expense of others in their lives and their livelihood. Causing Tasha or us as viewers to forget that celebrities, meaning these people, these people that Tasha reports on are human beings just as we are. And Tasha, in the grand scheme of things, learned a huge lesson of the tables turning. Now if we take a look at this picture you can see that all of the videos where she's mentioning a celebrity's name have well over 20,000, 50,000 views. But the videos where she brings on someone who's not a celebrity but maybe still has just as much valuable information to give such as fixing your credit brings less than 10,000 views some of these videos as, as you can see bring in less than 5,000 views and these videos were posted two years ago now once again as a content creator myself and a youtuber as people we can be sensitive about when it comes to the numbers Especially when we try new things on our channels and it doesn't work out the way we expect. So it does become a process of supply and demand. The YouTuber or content creator has the supply, but does the supply that the YouTuber content creator has meet the demand of the people that watch that content creator and YouTubers? content. In this case, what Tasha was supplying didn't necessarily meet the demands of her audience. Only a small subsection of her audience actually utilized the information that Tasha put out that once again was not related to pop culture or celebrities. This is a difficult scenario, once again, that a lot of YouTubers face with their channels. They get known for one thing and they ride it, you know, until the wheels fall off or they ride it into the sunset. But eventually that YouTuber, once again, being a human being, wants to evolve and grow and get into new, new content, other content, maybe that they weren't initially known for. Then this is where it becomes a cycle of chasing views and solely meeting the demands of your audience. But not taking account into the stock that you have in terms of your arsenal of talent, creativity, knowledge, your wherewithal. So. For me personally, I would have loved to have seen more videos like this of Tasha. I didn't even know Tasha had these types of videos where she talked about fixing your credit, how to buy a home. 
because whenever I go to her channel, how to pay off student loans is another video here you can see. Whenever I go to Tasha's channel, I'm always seeing drama, celebrity, you know, gossip. But as a seasoned YouTuber myself, I know that it's information like this, videos like this, where, you know, Tasha talks about, you know, with someone else about how to fix your credit and how to pay off student loans. It's these videos, no matter how low views they get, it's these videos that bring authenticity to the relationship between you and your audience. Because now you're relating to your audience. We all, in some way, shape, or form, are trying to fix up our credit or keep our credit maintained. A lot of people are working to pay off student loans. A lot of people want to know how to buy a home. Tasha had the platform and has the platform to showcase these things. But, as the social media monster and the fame, the price of fame, rear their ugly heads, we find Tasha preferring to chase clout. Fast forward to 2021. In 2021, Tasha K told on herself in a video series that she did on R. Kelly during R. Kelly's abuse trials back around that time frame. In a video published around 2020 or 2021, Tasha K allegedly admit, admits that she had the inside scoop as to the going-ons of the Chicago Federal Jail that R. Kelly was at. Allegedly, Tasha admitted that there was a phone tap somewhere in the federal jail and that she had the plug, meaning the person, connected to the phone tap. If you didn't know, I'm here to tell you that phone tapping is illegal. It was alleged that a retired U.S. prison officer was the one who shared the information from R. Kelly's recorded phone calls with Tasha. Once again, this information is alleged. This ended up just being one of the major times Tasha K was exposed for her, for her exploitive way of getting a celebrity exclu exclusive at any cost even to the point of allegedly getting involved in government affairs. But it didn't stop there for Tasha. Let's go back even further to 2019. It was in 2019 that a lawsuit was filed in the U.S. District Court for Georgia Claiming that Tasha K was defaming, slandering, and allegedly harassing Cardi B. Cardi B also later admitted that Tasha's lies and slander, or alleged lies and slander, about her harmed her mental health and it made her depressed. At this point, this became apparent for everyone to see with this Cardi B situation that there was no integrity in Tasha K. There was no integrity in her actions. There was no integrity allegedly in her reporting and the way she went, to go, went about going to get her stories. This Cardi B situation was meant to be a huge wake-up call to Tasha K. Now, 
not only was this meant to be a gr uh, wake up call to Tasha K in the grand scheme of things spiritually especially speaking this was meant to teach other people other youtubers and content creators online especially to respect people's boundaries The question is, has Tasha K learned? Cardi B was eventually rewarded with a $4 million win in her defamation lawsuit against Tasha K. So in the end, Tasha K had to owe Cardi B $4 million. So, the question we have to ask ourselves in this deep dive documentary is where did it all go wrong for Tasha K? Well, let's go back to 2018, 2019 with the whole R. Kelly situation. The allure of money and fame can be tempting. And it can be tough to stay on top in an online world that is moving at a rapid pace. We all have short attention spans. And just as something could happen today, we'll forget about it tomorrow. It's my belief that, allegedly, Tasha felt that in order to stay on top, she had to be the one with the exclusive at any expense. Including at the expense of the celebrities that she was reporting on. Integrity went out the window once Tasha got a little taste of success. And ultimately, this became her downfall. And this also became... the moral of this story the context of this documentary the story behind the social media monster and the price of fame in 2022 Tasha K is still reporting on celebrities and pop culture and she's sitting comfortably at over 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Tasha K ultimately is a lesson. A lesson specifically about the monsters that fame, clout, and access to money can create. As we can see, the key to defeating this type of monster will always be integrity. Thank you so much for your support. And I wish Tasha K the best.